Peace and good and greetings once again from the Shrine of St. Anthony. And here we're together once again to offer a bit of a reflection on one of the readings that we will be hearing uh, this Sunday of the 25th Sunday of Ordinary Time, uh, moving quite along quite quickly, uh, getting closer and closer each week uh, to the end of the year. And again, we're looking at the readings for the 25th Sunday. Uh, and in particular, I'd like to focus today upon uh, usually the odd man out reading, which is the second reading uh, almost most of the time, uh, at least during ordinary time. Uh, it's from one of Paul's writings or one of the epistles. And today uh, we have a, a little snippet uh, from Paul's first letter to Timothy. And here's the reading. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings should be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God. There is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself as a ransom for all. As we're making this video today, uh, thousands, perhaps tens of thousands of people are gathered in London queuing uh, in line to pay their last respects to the late Queen Elizabeth II. They've gathered there together at Westminster Hall to offer supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings for kings and who, all who are in high positions and for everyone and in a special way for Elizabeth. I'm sure in these last few days, we've all seen, uh, t to greater or lesser degrees, various accounts of her life and, and her, uh, her service to her, her, t her country. And I think that's the, that's the message that most people take away, even those of us here in America who don't really have a, a, a tradition, at least in modern times, of, of monarchy. But I'm sure many people in our culture here uh, look to Elizabeth with, with great affection and great uh, thanks for her service. We've probably all seen that speech that she gave, I believe it was in South Africa, uh, when she turned 21. She was still Princess Elizabeth in those days. And she committed herself, as she said, for the entire duration of her life, be it short or long, in serving the people of Great Britain and the Commonwealth. And of course, more than 70 years later, in fact, 70, what, that would be 75 years later, she was true to that. She gave every day of her life, really, in service to her realm, if you will. And therefore, she enjoyed a certain authenticity, a certain authority. What does that mean? What does it mean to say that someone has authority, right? It means that they're authentic. They, they do what they say and they say what they do. And indeed, that is what really made uh, Queen Elizabeth such a remarkable figure, that for all those years, she was faithful to what she pledged to do when she was a very, very young woman. And indeed, therefore, the people of her realm, people all over the world, uh, following Paul's admonition here to offer supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings for her life. Maybe in these days you've also seen uh, 
film images of her coronation. It's, a, it's an interesting thing. Not many people alive today would have experienced that or seen it live at least, right? But the interesting thing about uh, a royal coronation is that it's effectively a sacrament, right? It's an anointing by God. And again, we can argue the theology of, of that, right? But at least in her mind, her call to service was one rooted in service of God, right? She was a great woman of faith. And again, once again, someone we could admire and look up to, right? She was aware that there is one God and that there is one mediator between God and humankind, Jesus Christ, himself human, who gave himself as a ransom for all. And she, seeking to live that out, gave her life for her people. And we can, be, we can have great respect and thanks for that. And it's a reminder to ourselves, of course, what we are called to be, right? We acknowledge in faith that there is one God who loves us and who is our Savior and who sent his Son into the world to save us from our failings, from those times when we are not faithful, from those times when we are not true to what we say and about who we are, what we believe, right? And we're grateful for that gift. We're grateful for the great gift of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who, as St. Paul reminds us, uh, desires everyone to be saved, right? And to come to the knowledge of the truth. So we're grateful for that great gift of our Lord and Savior, who calls us to serve in these final days before Her Majesty's funeral, we, we join the people of her realm and saying, God save the Queen. But we also echo that, God save everyone. We're fa we're, we trust that we have faith that God indeed desires to save everyone. And we turn to our Savior, to our Lord Jesus Christ, to the one true God, and we give thanks and prayers and intercessions and supplications for that most powerful gift. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, hope we have a, we had a bit of a hiatus, uh, but we're back in back in the swing of things here. I hope, and we'll be joining you again hopefully next week. So until next time, uh, and also just a reminder to a word of encouragement really that all of you are our companions here. All of you who are united with us through your prayers and your service to us, you might say. Uh, you're, we are all united uh, under the banner of our great saint and, and, and patron, St. Anthony. We, we remember you all each day in our prayers here at the Friary, and we hope you'll continue to keep us in yours. So until next time, peace and good.